and uh, here at the ID Tech X show. Hi. 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 So who Good are you? morning. My name is Thomas Eman. I'm managing director of the ASIS Digital Health System. Yeah. So um, what are you showing here? So we show here uh, printed films with uh, drugs, and these are 3D printed drugs. So tablets. 3D printed drugs. Yes. So you can swallow this, for example, sildenafil. That's the active ingredient of Viagra. And uh, the other ones? The other ones are different ones. So uh, yeah, some but, some of them are without ingredients. What's the advantage of 3D printing pills? Uh, the traditional manufacturing methods are designed for mass production. So uh, we want to produce personalized medicine. So exactly the dosage you need. Um, so. We go from one size fits all to personalized medicine. So depending on your genetics, on your age, weight, metabolism. So uh, give you exactly the dosage you need and um, not what you get off shelf. Is it also a good idea to mix different ingredients in a way that mass production cannot do in the normal pills? Yes, or? We, we bring uh, different drugs into one film or one, one tablet. So um, especially very handy for old people taking uh, five, six pills per meal um, many times a day. So we bring it into one drug or two drugs per meal. So you can put the five in one pill? Exactly. And exactly the right dosage for that person? Yeah. They just need one pill? Yes. And they can swallow it the same way as a normal pill? Yes, they can swallow the, the, the same way. And It uh, tastes the same? <laughs> it, could, it could taste. So we can also bring a different taste in it, strawberry, raspberry, whatever you want. Um, yeah. The advantage is also that uh, the drugs could have different release times. So, um, what does that so mean? We, 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 don't, we don't mix the drugs. So, the drugs are independent. So, one drug works in two, way, uh, in two hours and the other one in, in four hours. Inside so one pill? Yes. So, that's the standard way that pills work, right? Or that's, that, that, that's the benefit of the. Uh, uh, drug combination we can produce with 3D printing. How? Um, the I'm trying to understand, I'm not very smart, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, the pharmacokinetics, it's nothing we, we developed. That's already there, but we bring the different drugs into one pill, which is not mm. possible with the mass production. So They make millions of the same pill? Exactly, so the 3D or the 2D printing uh, is the way or the key for us to, to make personalized medicine. So you can do it for food supplements? We can do it as well for food supplements, yes. That's a big market, right? It's a big market, but also for, for pharmaceuticals. So um, keep in mind that, for example, a, a very known blood thinner, it only exists in a three milligram tablet. If you look around, all of, all of the attendees here... Need a blood thinner? Uh, no, but no? are different. So <laughs> you and me may maybe of the same shape. By taking a, a girl of uh, 50 kilogram, uh, you can imagine that we both do not need the same, the same pill. And this depends on, on, on many other drugs as well. But this, this is reality. This is a big headache for doctors, right? They're thinking like, um, mm, you should get this, that. But actually, they have to calculate based on how big people are. And, yeah, and it would be better if it could be precise. But this vital data is already available in, in many indications. So is it weight or is it your liver function, your kidney function or whatever? So, and also these algorithms uh, you may need are, yeah, many of them are developed already. But the drugs are not there. So what we do, we translate the knowledge out of the diagnostic we already have into therapy. And uh, here, do you show on your machine how it looks? Yeah, you can, you, you, there? Yeah, it's on the floor. This is a 3D printer for pills. So that's a pill. That's now the 2D printing. Is roll here. to roll? Here is the. What is it? It's 2D, 3D printing. That's the, the 2D printing machine. It's a big machine. It's a big machine, but uh, it's also until you you pack it. So it's everything in one machine. And that's a poly pill. So with uh, multiple drugs into one. That's also a poly pill. Poly pill. And what is this? This is a oral dispersible film. So you can put it in the mouth. And then, it and then what happens? It, is, it dissolves 
and the truck can be immediately absorbed. So this is very handy for kids and for old people. We don't like to swallow pills. Exactly. So uh, Does it have all the same stuff? What, what do you mean have also the same stuff? Uh, it, some, when you swallow a pill, it goes further down the system, right? Yeah, but here so it's, it's immediately absorbed because it, it dissolves, also that the substrate dissolves, and the truck itself can immediately be absorbed. Did you say that the whole here, the yes. whole thing is swallowed? Yeah, no, it's, Nothing it's, it's, is... it's dissolved. So you don't swallow anything. It's just, it dissolves on your tongue. And then there's nothing left? No. You don't, it's not paper you have to throw out after? No. Nothing nothing is left over. So this is the future of medicine? This little piece of uh, you know, QR it, code? You know, this is uh, a very well-known uh, monograph. Uh, QR code, oral, right? do, oral dosage form. But uh, the traditional uh, method was that the drug was incorporated or embedded in the substrate. And then it's already designed for mass production. What we do, we print the drug on the substrate. It's similar like an inkjet, you know, from uh, yeah, printing paper. Yeah, so instead of ink, you print the drug? The, the drug is in the ink. And what we do is not also uh, only developing the printers. We do the formulations for the printable inks and for the 3D printing, it's a, it's a filament. So we embed the drug in the filament. The filament will be melted and then built into a tablet layer for layer. Um, you, you see it in the film. What is this? This is the 3D printer. Yeah, you have to wait. You this see is a poly it. pill? That's the poly pill again. Now they, they show how, to, to, how it's printing. And um, these machines right here? That's the 2D again. That's just a 2D now, printer? Now it's printing a 3D pill. Is it 100% safe? Yes. Is it FDA approved or what's it called? No, it's not yet FDA approved, but uh, it's GMP compliant. So what good is that G GMP is good manufacturing practices. So that's the yeah the regulatory um, we have to obey across the world. FDA is the USA, right? FDA, that's the authorities in in the US. But is it the same in Europe? Uh, it's completely similar. It's not the yeah. same, but uh, it's almost the same. So how soon you will be FDA and European FDA approved? Um, yeah, we, we hope end of the year. Because it's new, all this? It's pretty new. But it looks like big machines. Is it the same machines you would use to do all this no. other 3D printing stuff? Or no, it's custom well, made for this? No, no, no. Our customers will be hospitals and pharmacists. So we're aiming for desk, 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 uh, desktop uh, printers. Desktop? Yes. So they will buy the printer from you? Or do you uh, print the drugs for them? No, no. Uh, we want to enable them to print it. So uh, the hospitals and the, the pharmacists will print. Wow. Is this, is this also going to uh, revolutionize somewhat the R&D and research in medicine somehow? Uh, yeah, of course. We. How can we, it change that? Uh, clinical trials can be done much more quickly with the uh, digital printing. So it's also interesting for pharma companies. And uh, of course it could uh, change the supply chain because uh, nowadays drugs are bought and sold by, by wholesalers. So uh, if it's printed uh, by hospitals and pharmacists themselves, this could change the supply chain. Because a normal way to make a pill, you have to do a mold for it or something? It's a tablet press. It's press. It's press. In the standard that's, pressing thing. Yeah. But uh, that's fast. Even not, they yeah. can, don't have machines. They can do quick uh, samples. Yeah, but this is mass production. What we are aiming at is, is precision medicine. So that's uh, yeah, individualized. It's mm -hmm. not for mass production. So where are you based? Um, between Stuttgart and Munich in Germany. It's Ulm. All right. What do you think about the ID Tech X show? It's very interesting. So we're we're kind of a exotic uh, uh, company, but um, yeah, we're looking around because we're also uh, looking for partners and uh, looking for uh, yeah, let's say the newest technical equipment. Who's your partner going to be? What what kind of partner you need? Uh, we need partners in the IT field, um, and uh, so 
the formulation, so the, the pharmaceutical development and also the, the printers, uh, we do on our own. But also we need uh, partners in the uh, for, for the printers. We are coming from the pharma side. So, um, yeah, of course, we're, we're looking for technical uh, experts also in the printing part. Pharma is big. Yeah. It's a big industry, right? Yeah. Don't they have a lot of interest right now, what you're doing? Um, yeah. There is a big interest, but uh, it's also a very conservative uh, uh, industry, so it, it takes time to change. Do you have competitors or no? Uh, there, are, there are companies in, uh, we, we know in the UK and uh, in Asia. But uh, you're the best. Yeah, so we're coming from pharma. We have more than 25 uh, years experience all of our team in, in pharma. In different pharma companies or what? Different pharma companies, development of pharmaceuticals, and uh, so, yeah, we, we hope we're, we're still ahead of the others. So, um, in the pharma world, and in, in the state of science right now, we have a lot of diagnostics. Yes. And it's possible to know a lot of things, but they're not put into practice. I mean, we, we don't know everything, right? The doctors no, we, don't know everything. No, we don't know everything, but uh, we have a big know-how in diagnostics, and it's coming yeah, more data every day. And what we want to use, we want to use this data out of diagnostics and translate it into therapy. And of course, the doctors have to know all these uh, yeah, algorithms or um, vital data, but if the, the doctors are provided with this data, giving him the opportunity to give the yeah to calculate then the exact dosage it was help the patients a lot so personalized medicine is putting the yeah the patient in the centric giving him exactly the dosage he needs so for sure in the way that doctors work today and in the way they have diagnostics today there's a lot of potential in what you're doing already Abs absolutely and uh, still the doctor is the one deciding on on the dosage so um, he is the one deciding, giving the patient the right, the, the right pill, the right ingredient, the right dosage. And th is it possible to use AI for yes. this? Yes, yes, of so course. How is so it to used? developing the the algorithms, if we know um, which factors are um, important for the effectiveness of the drug, so a AI would help a lot to develop the right algorithms. Because you input the weight, you input the size, you input uh, what? The, the metabolism, so the kidney function, the liver functions, whatever. So uh, and and even blood tests, blood tests, and even uh, yeah, en environmental um, yeah circumstances, habits, uh, for example. Is it possible that something like a smartwatch that would have maybe a, a humidity sensor, a, a, a heart yeah, rate sensors, yeah, I could think of all for, this could for, be incorporated? For some, yeah, for some indication, would help a lot. And then automatically you would print out customized exact, but there's still a lot of margin for improving the understanding of exactly who needs what, no? Of course, of course, still. But is there like a, a requirement to do it differently now that you can dose everything precisely? Do we, do, does the industry need to understand something differently now, maybe potentially? Uh. Yeah, today we have just yeah the dosage forms uh, pharmacos produce so 10 milligram, 10, 20, 30, and we are aiming at to, to get you eight or 12 milligram or uh, 45, whatever you need. And uh, so, are you having a, a speech here? Yes. What you will talk about? I will talk about uh, personalized medicine and that digital printing is the key to that. So, um, with digital printing, we are able to produce personalized medicine. Um, and you have some examples also? You, you just talked about the pizza, for example? Uh, yeah, you know, everything in, in daily life today is, is getting more and more individualized again. So we started from uh, individualized, getting into mass production, and, and now everything is going back into personalization, and we want to do that in pharma. Because, uh, uh, for example, uh, pizza, people can choose what they want on it, right? Exactly, and, and, but for the drug, yeah, you are forced to take what you get uh, yeah, off shelf. And uh, we want to, to make the patient able to get the medicine he, he exactly needs. To get, let's say, as much effectiveness, but to lower the side effects. And uh, we have in many countries already 
the so-called pay for performance in place. So that only the truck will be reimbursed, that works, and have less side effects. This is what we are aiming at with personalized medicine. There's a huge problem in the industry of pharma with the people who get the wrong medicine yeah. and who sadly die or get sick. We have false medication in, in, in hospitals. A huge amount of people, right? Yeah, so this, this also would, would help a lot. So as you see here, this is a barcode where all the information is included, name of the patient, dosage, and then it also gives him a recommendation what he should not drink or, or, or take together with this uh, substrate. I'm just thinking, it's just a short idea, but maybe because you want to prevent uh, bad medication, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, wrong medication, uh, false, medi false medication. False medication. You want to maybe, for example, give them a small dose and immediately measure the effect and then increase the dose so you can have all kinds, yeah. you can have the pills yeah, yeah. increasingly get more of this thing. Yeah, it's and then much, it's much you can know more exactly how much they need for, it's for much, example, somebody yeah. doing... No, it's much more easier if uh, a patient comes into a hospital, for example, with Parkinson. Today, they test every day, giving, yeah, increase the dosage, but only with, um, yeah, let's say the standard pills they have. Here, with, with this possibility, you can precise giving not only the, the one gram or more, it's, it's maybe, maybe 10, uh, it's just a tenth or what, what, whatever. So it's much more easier to titrate this high for the patient. Easier and to reach the right? Th the right dosage. Um, the standard therapy right now, giving one milligram, two milligram, and then they go up to maybe five or, or 10. Here, you can much more do it precisely. And um, if you look for uh, pediatrics, for example, this is um, for children. The hospitals, they do it right now manually. So they destroy the, the standard pill and then try to make an individual dosage. But of course, it's uh, a lot of work and um, yeah, we have a lot of mistakes. Because the baby is a small human being. Yeah. You need to have exactly the right amount. Yeah. And what about people that have um, uh, maybe, let's say, uh, drug addicts that try to get off the drugs? Yeah. And maybe they also need exactly. to slowly the get into a certain exactly. Exactly. Uh, way yeah. of getting off their addiction. Yeah. yeah. Of course, this is also uh, very handy for um, yeah, all kind of uh, drugs like uh, cannabis or, or whatever. But it would be nice to have it in combination with some kind of way with, where people maybe can test themselves at home to check after the pill, to check the results, without having to go back to the hospital every time to check, or maybe, I don't know, if that makes sense. That would yeah, be some... Yeah, it depends. It has to be controlled by, by the experts. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot.